ever reaching for the prize, pressing on and laying hold of that for which my Savior died, that for which my Savior died. In the cross alone I glory, nothing of my own to give, only that which Christ has offered for my soul that I may live, for my soul that I may live. In the cross alone I glory, holding fast the word of life, toiling not in vain but being poured out as a sacrifice, poured out as a sacrifice. Never will I seek the glory that was never meant for me, always heavenward reflecting all to Jesus to receive, all to Jesus to receive. In the cross alone I glory, nothing of my own to give, only that which Christ has offered for my soul that I may live, for my soul that I may laying down greatest treasures count as worthless standing next to heaven's crowns standing next to heaven's crowns I could I could uh, honestly I could talk about Indonesia man we could we could have an extended discussion about Indonesia and the different things there. And, um, but uh, we, have something, we have something more important this morning to look at, and that's the Word of God. And so I appreciate, Pastor, the opportunity to stand up here in Sunday school and to, to open up God's Word. And so um, let's see here. We are going to be uh, in the book of Jeremiah this morning for Sunday school. And uh, if you would turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, and uh, we're going to look a little bit this morning at a Bible character who is a little more obscure, who, who is maybe not very well known. And I kind of like to learn about the people in the Bible who just seem like ordinary people, okay, because I'm an ordinary person too, and we're all just ordinary people. And a lot of times when we look at the, the characters in the Bible, we, you know, look at certain ones, and, well, that's a, that guy was just amazing, you know, and, 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 and we do think that they are sometimes better and superior, and we couldn't do those things, but really every Bible character is, they're just people too, um, but it's nice when we, when we see kind of some of these background characters, and we see just some ordinary people serving God, and uh, one of the amazing things about, about church and about serving God and being able to, as we've been traveling around and even over in other countries to see how that God uses anyone and everyone. And uh, God has given us the skills and the abilities that we have and some, some, sometimes things about ourselves we may not like, but God has given us our personality and our skills so that he can use us in his particular way that he's designed us for. And so uh, it may not be what we might want it to be and it may not be what someone else has, but the Bible says that we're all members of the body and we need all of our, all of our members, we need every part of our body to function right and to, and to do what we need to. And the same thing's true in serving the Lord. And uh, th that's kind of what I want to talk about this, this morning as we look in Jeremiah 32, as we look at this Bible character who um, you may not have ever really noticed him or really heard anything about this guy, but he was able to do something great for the Lord. And I'm going to go and tell you, it's not Jeremiah, okay? You know about Jeremiah, but it's someone who helped Jeremiah. Jeremiah, of course, was a prophet, and his job was to proclaim God's word, to take the message from God, and to give it to the people. Now, sometimes prophets in Israel, as we look through, the, through the, 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 these men who were preaching and proclaiming God's word, sometimes the prophet, because of where he was at and because of the time period, sometimes the prophet was very well liked. 
and the message that he had to say was well received and you know, you know, you know everything was going great for the for the prophet and you know most of his lifetime was you know serving God and it was going well but sometimes certain prophets and in certain time periods the prophets were not very well received they, they were not well liked in the time that they lived and by sometimes by the leaders by the kings of the land and uh, as we look here at Jeremiah Jeremiah was one of those who his message was not well received. He was not a very well-liked prophet. Uh, if we were to take the time, we see many times through his life, he, he spent a lot of time in prison. He, he spent a lot of time in uncomfortable places. He went through a lot of difficult times and hardships. And because of that, Jeremiah could not do all of the things that he wanted to do. He could not be in a lot of the places that he would have liked to have served. And so we see that Jeremiah needed help. Jeremiah needed men, needed women who would come and would assist him in doing the work that God had designed him to do, that God had called him to do as a prophet. Okay, the same thing is true here in our, in our modern day. Okay, you know, praise the Lord, you have a pastor who gets up and faithfully preaches God's word and who is, and, and who is faithful to, to serve and, and to lead. But the fact is that really a church is not really effective unless... There are people who are helping and people who are working and people who are serving together in that church and in the body of Christ. Because the fact is that there are places that you can go. There are places where you can make a difference. There are places where you can influence others where the fact, fact is pastor can't go there. The pastor can't have an influence there. The pastor cannot be there in those places. And the same is true here about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was limited because of where he was physically, because of the situations, and he needed the help from others. And so we're going to look at this guy. His name is Barak. His name is Barak here in, in Jeremiah. How many of you have, have never heard of Barak in the book of Jeremiah? How many of you, so, sorry, I don't want to embarrass you. How many of you have heard? How many of you are familiar with this guy named Barak? Okay, all right. And so kind of maybe obscure, and as we look at, look at this guy, you may say, you know, this is an interesting guy. I never really noticed this guy. But it was because of the work of Barak that Jeremiah was able to, to do great things for God. And so uh, let's, start, let's start here in Jeremiah, uh, in Jeremiah 32 and uh, in, in verse 6. And um, we're going to see him first introduced. And uh, the first thing we see about Barak is that he was faithful in work. He was faithful in work. And these first verses, they, they may seem unrelated. It may not quite make sense what all is going on here. Um, but, but, but if you look with me in verse 6, the Bible says, And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanamiel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, Buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son, that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. Okay, and so what's going on here in this in this story, in this situation here is that uh, Jeremiah has a cousin who's coming to him with this land that is in the family, and uh, they, they wanted to keep that land in the family. And so, so for whatever reason, Hannah Meal could not keep that land or that property and needed, was going to pass it on to the next relative. So the idea here, what's happening is really similar, the same thing that's happening in the book of Ruth with Boaz, you know, that inheritance of the land and, the, and, of, and, and of Ruth herself. And he had the opportunity as the kinsman redeemer to buy that property and keep it in the family. So that's what's going on here, okay? Uh, and, and so the, the verses that follow here talk about all of the detailed process, the, the, the official uh, records and everything that had to take place for this transaction to be officially correct and properly done right. Okay, And so uh, we won't take time to read all this, but basically what happens is the Bible says that, that they had to write down the evidence of what took place. They had to have witnesses seeing it. People had to sign it in certain places. The money had to be weighed out to make sure that it was the right amount and everything was done correctly. And then there were, there were two copies of this, of this record of this purchase taking place. And one was put into a jar and was stored and one was kept for public record. And there were all these details, all these things that had to happen in a particular way in order for this to take place. Okay. And uh, as Jeremiah was going through this process here in the prison, he needed someone who he could rely on, someone who was trustworthy to help with this process. 
Okay, he needed someone who could do all those details and take care of all these important things. Uh, and, 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 and even today, if you're making a large purchase, if, if you're buying a house, there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of details that have to be taken care of in order for everything to be just right, in order for that to, everything to go through. Uh, and, and if you're in that process of buying a house, you want to make sure that you have someone you're working with who knows what they're doing. Then you have to make sure that, 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 that all the paperwork is right, that everything is just how it ought to be, or else you're going to have problems. You're going to have issues. And we see here that, 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 that Jeremiah, as he's looking, going through this process, the person who he has help him is this guy named Barak. And here in verse 12 is the first time we hear this, this man re- referred to. In verse 12 it says, And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that, that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Barak, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, this purchase, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and the evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Okay. And so all this was happening for a reason. And so even though Barak really was just doing some paperwork, he really was just helping out with these really administrative type details. The purpose was so that Jeremiah could again tell the people that, hey, we're going into captivity, but one day we'll return and one day we'll be back. And even though Barak was doing a menial task, it seems like, even though it didn't seem important, he was faithful in it. And God used that simple faithfulness to do something great. And uh, sometimes in our lives, God puts us in a situation or or a place in our lives and we may be serving. And it may seem like this is just kind of a small and insignificant job. It doesn't seem like it's doing very much. But the fact is that God uses those small things. And the small thing is just as important if we're serving faithfully as the big thing is. Uh, and, and, and God will use us in those small things. And sometimes as we're faithful in those small things, God will give us maybe something more significant, something greater that we can serve him in. And as Barak was faithful in those small things, we see that, that Jeremiah was going to later call on him to do something more important, do something more significant. And we see that it happens just a few chapters later in Jeremiah chapter 36. And so Barak was faithful in work, even those insignificant things, even in the small thing. But next we see that Barak was forward in witnessing. He was forward in witnessing. Because he was faithful in the little things, God used him in a greater way. Okay, now in, in verse 36, in, verse, in, uh, in uh, verse, verse 1, the word of the Lord is going to come to Jeremiah again. And God has a, a mission for Jeremiah. But remember, Jeremiah is in prison right now. And so he cannot get out. He cannot go and do what he would like to do. Uh, in, in verse 1, of Jeremiah 36, look at what happens. Look at what God tells Jeremiah to do. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book and write there in all the words that I have spoken to thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, uh, unto thee from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. And so, so God tells him to write down all these things and to go and to proclaim it to the people. Okay, but uh, we have a problem. Jeremiah is still in prison. He cannot get out. And so Jeremiah needs a faithful man who will come and who will help record that and help to proclaim it. And so who does Jeremiah think of? Hey, you know, I need someone to do something, you know, this hard work. I need someone who, you know, who can take care of these details, who makes sure he copies down God's word accurately Make sure he proclaims it just like he's supposed to, just like it is the word of God. You know what? That guy Barrett, he was faithful before he helped me with those, with those details. I'll, I'll call on him again. And that's exactly what happened. The Bible says Jeremiah called Barak, had him write down, hand copy the word of God from the mouth of Jeremiah to proclaim to the people. And, and, and Barak was, was used greatly by God. We see that, that Barak communicated the word of God precisely, exactly what God gave Jeremiah Barak wrote down and Barak proclaimed to the people. Now, this is, this is kind of amusing, this response, as, as Jeremiah takes it to the people, or Barak takes it to the people, to the, to the leaders of Israel. They ask him and said, how did you get this message to proclaim it? And in verse 19, it says, tell us now, how didst thou write, or 17, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? And look, look what Barak says in verse 18. Then Barak answered them, 
He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. Okay, pretty simple, right? Jeremiah said them, and I wrote them down exactly as Jeremiah said. And he, he, he communicated God's word precisely. But we also see that Barak was effective in places where Jeremiah could not be. Okay, Jeremiah proclaimed the word in prison, no doubt. But I want you to see the places where Barak was able to proclaim God's word. Where Barak was able to read this message. Uh, in, in verse, uh, starting in verse... 10, we see all the places where, where, where Barak read this, this scripture. Okay, then read Barak in the, in the book, the words of Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan the scribe, in the higher court, at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. Wow, look at everywhere Barak could go. All the places where Jeremiah could not. He was able to do it out there within the people there at the temple. He was able to do it in some of the, some, in, in the scribes, some of the religious leaders, even in the higher court where the politicians were at. He was able to read that word and he was able to do something that, that really Jeremiah couldn't do. He was able to be faithful in places where Jeremiah could not go. And God has placed you where he wants you to be so that you can proclaim God's word where other people may not be able to go. And even though you may feel insignificant... Just like Barak here, God can use you right where you are with the skills that he's given you as long as we're faithful and as long as we're serving. And so, so Barak was forward in his witnessing. And then finally, we see that Barak was always found willing. He was always found willing. We see something here as we look at Barak and proclaiming God's word, something that's true in our lives. When we are faithful in proclaiming God's word and telling what God has to say, a couple of things can happen. Okay, the first thing is sometimes people hear God's word and they're excited about it. They hear the truth and they believe it and say, yes, that is true. And I accept it and I'm going to trust the word of God. And we see that that's what happens as Jeremiah spoke these words to the princes of the nation of Israel here. We see that they believed it and they said, hey, let's take this word and let's get it out. Let's, we're even going to take it to the king. Okay, but it, it, it's telling, though, what the, the, the warning that the, uh, that the princes give Barak as they're about to take it before the king. In verse 19, Then said the princes unto Barak, Go, hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, and let no man know where ye be. If I had been Barak, I might have been a little uncomfortable at this point in time when they said, we're going to take you to the king, but you got to get out of town. you got to hide because it's probably not going to be good. Because even though sometimes people accept and receive God's word, there are, there are oftentimes people who do not, yes. who do not want to hear anything about God's word. And that's exactly what happened here. The word of Jeremiah, the word of God through Jeremiah was read before the king, Jehoiakim. And uh, Jehoiakim was a wicked king. He didn't want to hear God's word. And, and, and this is that classic story that we know of as that scripture was read to him. Jehoiakim grabbed, that, the, grabbed the, the, the scroll and anything he didn't like, he cut it out with his pen knife and threw it in the fire. And how discouraging must that, must that have been for Barak? Yeah, we told the king, he, we, we read it to him, but uh, he, he burned it up. He didn't want to hear it at all. And so honestly, if it had been me, you know, if I had been Barak, I might have been discouraged. I might have said, you know what, I'm, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't know, the pressure's on, this is a little bit intense. I, I'm not sure about this, but the fact is we see that Barak was, was found willing again. In, in a few verses here, starting in, in, in verse 19, the Bible says the word of God, uh, uh, this is actually a little bit later in verse 27, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah again. And God told Jeremiah, hey, write those things down again. All, all those scriptures that were burned by the king, you need to write them down again. Oh, oh and he even tells him, oh, and there's more. Here, here are some more words to write down. And so who does Jeremiah call on? He calls on Barak, that faithful man who was willing to go and was willing to serve. And said, I've got some more for you to write down. Oh, oh but wait, there's, there's more. Okay? And, and, and really, he, he wrote down, really, the, the book of Jeremiah. At this point, we have 36 chapters of it. Okay? It was quite a bit of writing that, that, that Barak had to do. And even though it was burned last time, and even though it sound, seemed like his time was wasted, he was there again, ready and willing to do it again, and to serve exactly how God wanted to be. Even though it was difficult, even though it was challenging, even though it didn't seem productive at the time, God was able to do something great through Barak, through Jeremiah. And it doesn't end there. We see Barak's names a few times scattered throughout the rest of the book of Jeremiah, and every time he was there by Jeremiah's side, serving and helping. You may not be a prophet. You may not be a preacher. But you could be a barrack. 
You can serve God with the abilities that he's given you where you are. God wants all of us to serve. God wants all of us to be willing and ready to use the abilities that he's given us to serve him in the place that he's put us. Because all of us together makes God's work Amen. happen. Amen. And uh, let's, let's, let's close. You want me to just pray and close this out? Okay, let's, all right, let, let's, let's close Sunday school and I appreciate it. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today, Lord. And thank you for the folks this morning listening and being attentive to your word. And I thank you, Father, for this, for this story about how we see just a regular guy who was willing to serve and to be used of you even in a challenging time, Lord, help us to be willing in this, this time of uncertainty in our world to be faithful in the little things so that your word can go forward, so that we can be witnesses to you. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Bless the rest of our service today. In Jesus' name, amen.